Let's go down here. People will be sitting all around the back of it. All around the back of it. All upstairs. The, those, these seats and those seats there always was more expensive than the one all the way upstairs. I actually grew up from down south, but I moved, came to Chicago at the age of 16. And I remember every summer I came up here, I would come in here and watch the movies. The last movie I remember watching in the Central Park Theater was The Wall Wagon with uh, James, uh, I mean John Wayne, and I got Kirk Douglas. I think that was about the last movie that was produced, that, that was filmed here. I don't really remember the last show that we saw here. Um, and really don't remember a lot of the shows. I just remember the good times that we had at this theater. I've had pictures of this theater on my phone for the last five or six years. I've been around the country and I always tell people, look what's in North London. As I told the previous alderman, if it's the last thing that I do, this theater will not go away. Being a young child coming in here and seeing high ceilings and the different doors, uh, I'm from the South. And when we were in the South, we were not allowed to sit down on this level of the show. African-Americans had to go on the second level. So coming in here and being able to come through the grand doors of the Central Park Theater, it was magnificent. It was magnificent. And so we have two ways up here, one on this side, and one over to your our right. We're gonna go back downstairs. And all of this carpet has been here for years. Dr. Lincoln Scott, he put it here. And I tell you, this was a beautiful place to come to. People just love to come to. They came from all over the United States and across the country. All type of performers came and performed here. All type of all type of groups seen here, the um, Jackson Fives and all of those great groups came here and performed right here at the Central Park Theater, now known as the House of Prayer. And this is one of our lobbies here. And I wanted to show you where, come follow me. I thought I would research. What is this place, really? You know, it was just a theater to me. But what's the history of this theater? So what I found out that Malibang and Katz, the family members, that's, that's the family that started the theater. They actually started on Roosevelt and Kesey as like a Vanderbilt-like act down there. I said, oh, interesting. So it, it's about family, this theater is. And I researched and I researched and then I found out that one of the brothers, AJ, had became the president of Paramount Pictures. So that made even more grandeur for me for this building, you know. All of this is uh, original from uh, the Central Park Theater. You can see, you point the camera up, you can see the, see the fixture, how it was designed. All we did was went over and cleaned, cleared it up, put a little paint in there, and made it, brought it right back to its originality. If you can kind of see, you can kind of point over here. That's our founding pastor, Dr. Lincoln Scott. 
and his wife, uh, Mother Clara Scott, who uh, purchased this uh, theater back in 1971. I said I would never marry a minister because my father was a pastor. But when we were courting, he wasn't a minister. But then he said, the Lord called him to the ministry, and I was stuck, because I was in love. <laughs> so we got married in 1955, 19, and then he started the church, and I was in my 20s, and he was 25. I joined the church in 1991, we was having church in here every Sunday, and it, it was just awesome. We had uh, uh, the organ going, we had the drums going. You come in there on Sunday morning service, maybe about 30 or 40 people in there, but you thought it was full because of the way the service was going. That parking lot over there, and he would have tables out there with clothes if you needed a food to eat. He tried to turn it back to its original state. So he took all the ceiling down, took all the, uh, uh, the paneling, took all that off. And uh, so it could, it could be majestic again for them. And then we started having those uh, group singers to come in. We had the Mighty Clowns of Joy, Joy the Gospel Keynotes, Shirley Caesar. Uh, every Sunday it was a group here. And I would come to the, I, I used to come to the programs. Sometimes we used to sneak in, and sometimes we used to pay to get in. But this is where all of the groups came, the movie stars came, they would, this would be their dressing room once they got here, and then they would just move right out on stage. Before, it used to be in the basement where they would come up. But now, but later in the 90s, 80s and 90s, they would dress in here, they would come through the side door, nobody would know that they was here, and because they would come through the door right here, and they would stay in this office here. You know, I can remember walking down the street and just hearing, you know, all the gospel singing and, you know, the crowd and everything. I thought it was very, very, you know, interesting, you know what I'm saying, as well as needed. Um, you know, gospel music is our roots, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, me, myself, you know, being a member here and being able to enjoy, you know, the building and, you know what I'm saying, and, and everything that comes with it, you know, I think it's very much needed, you know. It's important not only to the neighborhood, this theater is important to the city of Chicago. It has a lot of history. When we was having the, the, the movie theater, it was for the community. We was having those big programs, those gospel programs, it was for the community. And the same thing could happen now if we could bring Central Park Theater back to its glory of days. We need a strong uh, foundation here. So as Dr. King used to say, don't judge me by the color of my skin, don't judge me by my character. Well, I tell people now, don't judge me for what you see on the media. Judge North Lundell for who we really are. That's me. Thank you.